Thank you so much for uh, the invitation to speak about uh, a, a portion of my favorite uh, topic. The uh, problem we have is that uh, we need new drugs for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. And uh, obviously, it, uh, if we're going to get paid for them, uh, we have to have FDA approval. And to approve drugs, it's better to have consistent uh, criteria so various uh, studies can be compared. The basics, the, 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 the risk of the patients uh, going into the study, uh, high risk we would define as high grade T1 or CIS. The low risk are uh, solitary, low grade, non-invasive tumor, less than three centimeters in diameter, and everything else <coughs> falls into the intermediate risk, which uh, for that reason it has more variation <coughs> in prognosis than the other groups. Uh, those <coughs> Uh, a previous recommendation was that the intermediate risk patients should uh, receive uh, BCG immunotherapy, but we can't really do that now because of the shortage. Um, BCG naive is defined as obviously as patients who haven't had BCG or uh, because those that have not had it for three years uh, do uh, quite well as well, uh, <coughs> that they are included in that group. BCG failure is termed uh, refractory, uh, which is increasing disease at three months. If it's obvious, it's going to fail. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it's disease persistence at six months because uh, in the SWOG study, 60% um, of patients with carcinoma in situ at three months with uh, three additional installations of BCG had complete response by six months. So sometimes it does take six months for the complete response. And then there is uh, <clears throat> unresponsive uh, patients, that is, they failed BCG, intolerant uh, or unavailable. Baseline <clears throat> evaluations uh, uh, should be standard. Uh, consider, uh, <clears throat> we should look at the upper tract uh, of as well as uh, <clears throat> the uh, prostatic uh, urethra in high-risk uh, patients. Uh, previous results of uh, biopsy and cytology, prior tr treatment uh, history, all are, uh, should be uh, included. <clears throat> the uh, endpoints are uh, for carcinoma in situ, obviously we can look at complete, complete response percent and duration. Uh, for papillary tumors, it's freedom from <coughs> recurrence, and that can <coughs> be at miles, different milestones. Uh, for high-grade uh, tumors, uh, freedom from recurrence of high-grade disease uh, is pertinent because a, a low-grade uh, recurrence has such a different prognosis. Uh, One-year freedom from high-risk disease uh, is appropriate for the high-grade uh, T T1 or uh, carcinoma in situ. And then you can have any number of secondary uh, endpoints, uh, toxicity being one uh, that might be a, a very appropriate uh, for reducing the side effects of our treatment. The FDA is looking for a 50% uh, uh, complete response in BCG unresponsive uh, patients, which is a, a pretty high uh, bar. That is equivalent uh, to the response rate of um, uh, our standard chemotherapies in non-BCG failures. To, so to, uh, to get that, that kind of a response in BCG failure patients uh, may be too high. Uh, 30 percent, uh, I think, uh, might be more appropriate. For uh, <clears throat> BCG uh, naive uh, patients, uh, BCG uh, maintenance is, uh, uh, with the three-week maintenance, is the standard uh, treatment uh, and progression uh, in those that fail that is, is very high and therefore uh, it would uh, consider to be unethical 
uh, to have a, a, a control, uh, no treatment or placebo arm. Single arm studies uh, are also uh, under consideration because of the BCG shortage. Um, in uh, drug studies, uh, a, the study drug uh, can be compared with the chemotherapy of choice, selecting the, op uh, the optimal treatment based on the previous history. Um, <clears throat> they recommend no more than one year of chemotherapy maintenance because uh, maintenance beyond that point with chemotherapy has not been demonstrated to be effective. It, it would be possible to compare uh, three-week maintenance therapy with that plus a study drug to improve efficacy or decrease toxicity, and also uh, the three-week maintenance uh, versus a stud study drug could be considered uh, looking at uh, side effects. So for um, resected papillary disease, if 70% of patients would be expected to be recurrence-free at two years, the sample size estimate um, would, to be required would be 450 uh, patients to improve the disease-free status from 70 to 80%. Uh, that would be a relative uh, risk reduction of 37% of hazard ratio, uh, 0.63. In low-risk patients, um, and again, the solitary low-grade uh, tumors. Um, the standard treatment is a single post-operative installation of chemotherapy, and those patients uh, would be eligible for uh, randomized uh, controlled uh, studies. The uh, recommended follow-up is uh, cysto at three months, and if that's negative, then uh, on study, cystoscopy uh, every six months uh, would be sufficient. And to see a reduction in tumor recurrence of 6% at two years, that is increasing the uh, disease-free status from 85 to 91%, estimated that would require 600 uh, patients uh, for a uh, hazard rate of, point of uh, 58%. Uh, and a statistically significant uh, result. So in conclusion, um, we desperately need new drugs uh, for non-invasive, uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. Um, and there are multiple uh, patients, groups who are, uh, who need that. If we use standard uh, definition and baseline studies, a follow-up and endpoints, uh, it will expedite uh, approval and we will be able to compare treatments more effectively. Uh, BCGN responsive CIS, uh, high grade and T1 uh, disease for whom radical cystectomy uh, is not an option are appropriate for single arm studies. Uh, complete response rate uh, uh, would be, uh, we'd be looking for 30 to 50 percent at six months and a 10% reduction in recurrence with repeat BCG would require 450 patients. Uh, for low risk, a 6% <coughs> reduction would require 600 patients. Thank you.